Okay, let me show you what I've set up so far. I've leveled the boat on some stands in the shop and we won't be moving this boat at all until I get some measurements. I've also set the level on the floor on the tr so that we can mark off the transom and I've got the level line running up the center of the transom and through a couple of centering holes that are holding in the, uh, the stern post in. So with that I know that the boat is perfectly level uh, vertically and then we'll assume that the boat is level horizontally using a few levels across the, uh, the, the thwarts. So then I've set the level to the horizontal line and I'm using the marks on the keel running through the hull of the boat to the bow and we have pretty well level fore and aft and we have level uh, vertical. So we should be able to start measuring, taking some measurements off of here. So the next phase will be to put a level line above the boat and uh, mark from there. So now that the hull is level to a water line, I've set up a long ruler which basically is a three-quarter square piece of aluminum tubing to which I have glued a measuring tape. So a sticky back, you can buy them that way, it's 10 feet long. And now we've got it resting on the top of the stem, centered on the center line of the stem, running through to the back and centered on the back of the transom. Then using the laser level, I have leveled out the ruler from front to back. So I've had to just prop it up. There's a bit of a deflection, a little bit of sag in the middle of the aluminum rod but I think we've got it level now so if we just turn off the lights we can probably see a little bit better where the level line is it's coming through right through the top of the ruler and it's nicely centered on the back of the boat and I've just made a you know a basic small simple stand the back here resting on the floor clamped to the transom and then the long ruler is clamped to that uh, vertical uh, 2x4. Okay, I've got everything leveled out, boat's level, um, ruler across the top is level. So basically what I'm going to be doing is taking lines from the inside of this boat. Now, traditionally you might on a smooth shape like a canoe or, or a round bottom boat, probably be simpler to take lines on the outside of the boat by setting up a big frame, putting a bunch of level line marks and just measuring points. Uh, from uh, on the outside of the hull, but that's a little bit harder to do on a traditional lap strike boat Because you know, there's a bunch of different shapes and where you take the uh, the marks from so in creating a patterns to create molds inside this boat the, the all of these planking would have been bent over those molds So it's going to be simple enough to determine a couple of spacings Make some patterns of the inside of the boat to which the planking would have been resting on when the boat was built so that's what we're going to uh, move on to next, is uh, determining sort of the spacing of how many forms I would like to have in here, probably four or five, including the transom, and then uh, take some patterns at those points. So I can use my plumb bobs hanging down here with my ruler on the forward facing to determine exactly where I would like to take a pattern from. So after playing around with a few different uh, measurement spacings uh, for forms inside the rowboat, I kind of thought maybe it's 16 inches, uh, 24 inches. I ended up deciding on 18 inches spacing. That was going to give me one tube. That's going to give me five forms inside the boat plus the transom. And the reason for that is, is that I wanted uh, the number one form to be just near where the end of the stem would be resting because Normally in building the boat upside down, the stem would be sort of curving up and resting into a notch on one of the, on, on the first form. So looking at it this way, the ruler is set at zero right at the furthest point on the top of the stem, that's zero. Number one form will be 18 inches back, number two form will be 36, and I've got a little bit of a tape here just sort of for myself to remind. And then I've hung my plumb bobs, I have two, I have a couple more, but I've got them hooked up. Uh, plumb bobs at those points and had it drop right onto the hog in the bottom of the boat where I can make a center line down there. So I can have a center line running vertically from the ruler top down. With the ruler on the top here, uh, what that ruler uh, 
ends up being is sort of the, the baseline. It, we can make a baseline a bit higher, but I need a baseline for which to measure everything off of. So we're going to be measuring down from the baseline and out from the center line. And so this is, I guess in a sense you could say, zero uh, water line on, on the uh, plotted for the uh, table of offsets. So the next step is to actually get a, a rough pattern of this spacing. I'm going to choose uh, form number two at this point in time. I know that my uh, rule on the top, my baseline, is uh, perfectly aligned down the center line and level. Now I need a, a, a sort of a, a brace that's going to be perpendicular to that line. So right at 36 inches, I've clamped a, uh, uh, you know, a straight edge to here. And now I'm just going to use my square and I can square up this brace here a little perfectly to the center line and clamp it down to the gunnel. Then I have cut out some scrap half inch plywood so that it'll fit under the center line. And I could even rest it up against the center line there. And then I'm going to just clamp this in a couple of places and I'm ready to start gluing some sticks on and now with the plywood actually clamped in place I can just double check or square by not having my uh, my square sort of on an angle facing down across this brace but against the plywood and against the center line and we're bang right on across at least you know eight and that twelve inches. First thing I can do is the baseline is the underside of the ruler so I can mark on my plywood here by just putting my small ruler up against it and mark that line there and draw and say that's base, baseline right there. And I only need to do one half of the boat from center line out because we have to assume that the boat when built was built on symmetrical forms. So I'm only taking one half, flip it over, I can make the pattern for the other side. But what I'm going to be doing is uh, taking some points on, on all the planking here then laying this out on some uh, large paper at the drafting table, mark all those points, and then uh, run a batten between them to create a fair line. So I also can mark down the bottom here on my uh, got a piece of masking tape where the center line is down through, which where my plumb bob was hanging, which I've had to remove. The other thing is that the the shear line, as much as I could mark across this line here to where the shear line is sitting. It's not quite the proper shear line because these gunnels are quite uh, um, angled towards the outer edge. So the top of the planking is, is here, but the edge of the uh, in whale is a bit higher than where the planking would be. Um, it would it be symmetrical if I took that mark and then subtracted maybe, you know, a quarter of an inch all the way around, that might work. But on the lofting table, we'll be able to figure out a proper uh, curve shear line that is nice and fair and almost matches the existing boat here. Then off camera I just took some scrap quarter inch ply and uh, rip a whole bunch of lengths on my table saw, cut them to, uh, or sorry, widths on the table saw, cut them to some shorter lengths on the band saw, and then on my disc sander I have just made nice little pointy ends to these. These are going to be the very end pointers which I'll be hot gluing onto the plywood here. So I've got a whole bucket of them made probably lots more than I need but I just never know whether I want to grab another one and add another point. The more points that I can add to this, uh, this, this uh, pattern inside here right now will help them to make a fair curve. If one of them is a little out it'll all fare in in the lofting process. Alright my hot glue gun is ready. So all I'm going to try and do here is run a, a bead of hot glue on here and then I am going to put a pointer straight down to the center line. 
and I will mark that. And then I will just sort of write that as that center line. Now the other thing I would point out is this form, the, the stern face of the form that I'm creating is on the 36 inch mark. I need to take the patterns on the stern face of, of the plywood because when the form goes into the boat, the edges of the form here would actually be beveled smaller towards the narrower ends of the boat. So I will end up being switching from center out. So really what I'm measuring on the, is the inside of the plywood towards the center of the boat. And this other thing is, is that as I add the sticks and the pointers, we can assume that when the forms were here, these, this planking here was contacting the form. So I'm going to add this stick to the very edge of the planking on the upper edge face. Here we're almost touching the plywood to the form itself. And I've made my sticks good and long enough just in case I have to span a good large gap between my rough cut uh, plywood and the inside of the boat. And you'll notice I'm just dropping my hot glue gun onto a scrap piece of plywood here. I have kind of scraped and cleaned and sanded inside this boat. And hot glue guns have been known to just drip. Okay, and that one slipped. So that one kind of, when I pushed it in, slipped into you know, on top of the planking and wanted to go to the inner edge a bit. So I can pull it off. I mean, they'll stick on here pretty good, but I really want to make sure I'm just touching the top of that plank. And what I will do is add one up the top here to the bottom of the in wheel, I think I can use that as a common point through the whole boat and knowing the thickness of the in wheel itself that I would need to add. So I've also labeled form number two, we don't get the two mixed up. If I want to, so I would put on here that this is shear and that we might mark that this is the inner face of form number two. And with that done, we've got one of the patterns made. I should also add that in determining the spacing of the forms at 18 inches, it was also important to make sure that where I was taking patterns from was not going to be on top of a rib. Otherwise, I would not be able to glue my little sticks down to the planking. And here I decided that I could also just run a, a nice straight edge across the, uh, the gunnels to mark where the shear line is. Now it's not exactly the shear line, it's the top of the in wheel, but then I would simply just measure the distance between the underside of my the stick across and to the top of the in wheel and mark it on the form that this is the shear line less in this case and in most cases a half an inch would be the shear line would be below this line. So now because the wider side of the form will be more towards the center of the boat or amidships, I will put the sticks to the inner face 
on this form number four. Down to the bottom here, I've marked the center line. I've marked where the edge of the stem would be fitting into a notch, and then I've met, measured, uh, put a pointer down to where so the bottom of the stem would be, or the bottom of the notch, or the top of the notch, however you look at it. And then just this will be the last one we need to do. There's still a lot more measuring to do on things and patterns to make. But with these forms roughed out, we'll be able to take them to the drafting board and see what it looks like. So now that I have the five patterns of the uh, very rough patterns of the various placements of our 18 inch spacing for some forms, I will take those to a workbench, kind of just roughly uh, draw them out on a large uh, piece of paper to create sort of a body plan view. It's very rough. We'll take some numbers, create a table of offsets. And I think that's going to conclude episode two in this series of videos on ticking lines from the little Ken Douglas here. Thank you very much for tuning in. You might consider becoming a subscriber or just hit that little bell button. That's going to remind you every time a new video is uploaded from Orca Boat Shop.